Well, let's get the view now, looking at the opinion pages of today's newspapers. What do the Tories do now, asks Matthew Duncona in The Guardian. He says they know the DUP deal can't hold and the battle for the future of the party has begun. Leah McKinstry in The Express argues that austerity is still necessary for our long-term prosperity. In The Telegraph, Charles Alden-Jones says it's the EU that's leaving, not the UK, as Europe takes control of its taxation and begins to form an army. Matt Ridley in The Times says the left is winning the war of words when it comes to political vocabulary. Also in The Times, Morland's cartoon has the government's austerity fishing boat stuck on dry land while claiming it's the opposition who are all at sea. And quite pleased, Blower in The Telegraph pictures Theresa May at Wimbledon unable to concentrate on her game as her cabinet heckle her from the stands. Well, joining me today are Yasmin Alibi, Brown, columnist for The Eye, and the International Business Times, and Michael Heaver, former advisor to Nigel Farage. Uh, welcome to you both. Well, let's talk uh, a little bit about the right uh, language on the right, uh, whether they're being uh, out uh, manipulated uh, by uh, people on the left. Uh, I mean, it strikes me that he doesn't mention Donald Trump, but Donald Trump is certainly getting his message across, isn't he? Oh, he certainly is. And I mean, Trump's the big fight battle, I would say, from the right, um, in terms of using Twitter, in terms of harnessing, in terms of dominating the What do you think of that narrative. video of bashing CNN? Fantastic. Look at the response. Huge response. He's dominating the media narrative. Look, all this stuff about, oh, it encourages media violence. Load of rubbish. People at home love this new type of politics. It's why Trump won. It's a new way of communicating. It's raw, exciting, and it's unfiltered. I love it. What do you think, Yasmin? Well, I'm not going to respond to this. It's too way out. But I think well, this well, is a really... No, honestly, I mean, you know... No, this well, is a really good piece, about... actually. Yeah, why it's do you a really think the Trump piece. thing's a bad idea, though? I think... Trump is a disgrace to politics and seriousness and life. But I don't want to engage with this. Mm. I want to look at this. And what he's saying, I've never thought about. And he's quite right. That the way the left has made some vocabulary really appealing. Things uh, like bedroom tax. Exactly. They were tax. good at that. Mm. But I don't think he's right in, the, in saying that the right has been all rubbish at it. Because remember the, the, when they talked about benefit scroungers, it even appealed to those who were on benefits. And so they, they have used, and Farage is past master at using language, actually. I mean, so, take back control, that was quite successful. Take back yeah. control, I mean, the right is generally, I, I would say, a lot worse at this, but what we saw of the EU referendum was a slightly loose and sort of cross-party campaign that actually saw the right use things like take back control, unskilled uh, labour, flooding, you know, flooding the labour market of unskilled labour, things like that. But, you know, there's, there's no doubt that when you talk about sort of climate change, this denier mentality and Islamophobia, hard Brexit. I mean, you know, 99.9% .9 of people voted for hard Brexit that were Leave voters, you know, coming out of the customs union single market. I mean, it was, I think that is generally accepted now. Um, and the fact that it was painted out as some sort well, of... Well, I'm sure it. it's not accepted by me because no. it wasn't defined on the no. uh, ballot paper. So, uh, but all the uh, major players say what it was. No, and where is your evidence? And most people thought that's what they were voting yeah. for. They did not know what they were voting for, actually. Well, of course they did. Of no, they, they did, did not. We had debates no. with a lengthy because referendum. Because 90% of the newspapers just... and your outlets and everything like that gave them certain emotional content. And that's what the right has been good at. Well, taking back control of your borders is a policy. Right. It is a policy. But okay. well, you well, can't I, take I, control back because the, even, the, no. even David Davis but, has but said immigration it seems, can't be stopped. It seems to me if we can go on to the Charles Orton Jones piece in The Telegraph, actually that he does make a serious point. I mean, from his vantage point, mm. he says this is the EU leaving us. Mm. But it is true, and I would say people did vote for this, that they didn't vote for a United States of Europe, or to be part of the United States of Europe, European army, single tax system. I mean, that clearly is not being in the European Union. And whether you think that's a good, or a good idea or a bad idea, that actually puts its finger on what is the problem for well, the UK. Well, it's with the not European a problem. Union, I it? think, well, you know, it's not a problem if you're European, and I'm pro European, and I envy the remaining EU because they are able to do this without us being there constantly moaning. Well, exactly. Yeah. So but it's better to separate then, isn't well, it? Well, it's not better to separate in terms of my vision and the vision of apparently now 52%, 56% think maybe it wasn't such a good idea. But 
he's right that you know they're not going to be sitting there weeping for us. Yeah, but we do. They're not. No, but if they want to construct the United States of Europe, truth is. British people never wanted to be part of that, isn't it? Yeah, and I would say the EU is becoming a downright dangerous organisation. Just look at the way that they fully backed, as an institution, Emmanuel Macron. Look at the way they're moving against Viktor Orban in Hungary. The EU are now seeking to oh. oust what? elected governments. Are you, oh, no, are you of course they are. Him? Of course, no, listen. You live in a on a different planet. No, sorry, I live, think? A, I live in a, oh. I live in a Europe. I want to live in a Europe where <laughs> governments that are elected by the people are allowed to put in place policies that the people of those countries want, so, not to be overruled by unelected. And when we talk about an army here, this so is very serious. As near as fascism. Can I just leave, as leave near as fascism. When we talk about an EU army here, we are talking about potentially an unelected president and unelected figures having access to European military might. That should alarm everyone, no matter where you are. How can you have military capability in the hands of presidents in the EU that aren't accountable to anyone? This NATO? is a very dangerous well, that, way. That's how NATO works. That's how NATO works. We, we, we opt to a certain extent. But we, this is well, going to exactly. be pushed on top. Well, no, but those countries are opting in. You no, can't, so you can't say that. So that no, 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 no. They will end up saying, you join the EU army or leave. They, this is the tactic now to bully people. How they do don't you know? want another Brexit happening. How happen do you know? Because they want to stop another Brexit happening. Because they want to stop another Brexit happening. They think military entanglement. They think military entanglement is the way to stop a further break of the EU. They're going to push for it. And know, that's what they're going for. I know fake news is very fashionable. Well, what's fake about what I've just said? You haven't shown us that that's what they're going to do. Well, of course it's what they're going to do. Well, that's not evidence. So why, that's not so you why, sitting so, here no, no, telling no. us, of course that's okay. what they're going to do. Look people it, can opt in, well, people can opt I, out. I you well, don't know. No, they can't opt out. Of As, uh, well, I think if you remain in the European Union, I think he's right that they're talking about centralised control, yeah. but they are talking about individual members of the European Union op op opting in. And uh, yeah. uh, Although it's an interesting point he makes, for example, on tax harmonisation. That uh, that was something which the European Union said wasn't its area, but now it's saying it is this its is how they operate. area because of Macron. And this is how they operate. It starts off as bit by bit, oh, you can opt in, it just affects a few people, and then it's foisted across everyone, and you have to join up and centralise or you are out. And they are desperate to centralise as much as they possibly can because Brexit mm. has scared the bejesus out of them. And they want to bully, cajole and centralise as much as possible to stop another can Brexit Can I just say happening. one thing, though, about your earlier point? Democracy got Hitler elected. Never I'm forget. Sorry. I'm sorry. Never forget I'm sorry. that there this are people pathetic. who, the sometimes, who get elected are absolutely undemocratic, and that goes for Hungary. So you want the EU Hungary, to start Hungary is yeah? not a good example so for you want, your, for your argument. Public? Don't shout, don't shout, don't shout. I'm, I'm not shouting. Yeah, I'm telling you, you there are elected governments yeah. across yeah. Europe that the yeah. EU is now trying Elections to Elections don't. Do you think that's healthy? Election. Do you believe in democracy? Can, can I speak? Do you really bully people like this all the time? Oh. And you complain about bullying? I'm trying to speak. Sometimes votes come in and people are elected who are a danger to democracy. And the Hungarian example was not a good example. Poland, Czech Republic? Well, you want the EU to oust all of these governments? Well, you think that's democracy? There are values. Yeah, there are values. Can I, can there I, are EU can values. Can I just ask you, as someone who does believe in democracy, how do you think you deal with people when they, they come in and start implementing This is where the EU is important, because if you have a pan-national organisation with stated values, remember the EU was, state, it was, just, was set up after the Second World War explicitly as a value base against fascism. Mm. So if fascists get in, I'm very pleased we have the EU to say this is not acceptable. So that's it, no more democracy in Europe. The uh, EU is going to decide well, who runs all the countries, and if they don't run the government, they But do you accept that... There are common values uh, which we have as Europeans, whether in the European Union or not, and that we should all stand up for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think there are, are European values, but I think those values lie within the people. And I think we've seen recent polls from Pew Research Centre show that EU values are being massively rejected by the European people. You know, open borders, the migrant crisis, the euro's been a complete fiscal disaster. These so-called EU values are not the values of the European people. They're the values of the elite at the top. They're being rejected, and that is why the EU, as an organisation, isn't going to last French too much longer. French did just vote for Macron, though, didn't they? And he's the driving force behind the army and the... Uh, yes. But we've also uh, seen... Tax harmonisation. But we've also seen record low turnout in France. I think a lot of people in France are completely giving up on the Not political system. Not in the first system. round. He won with over 80%. Well, the recent elections he's just had... But, you yeah, know, you've seen... That the he's, he's, OK. Yeah. Uh, well, we look forward to speaking to you both uh, in the next hour. Well, let's get the view now, looking at the opinion pages of the newspapers. And Ian Birrell in the eye says the Conservatives need drastically to change course in order to win back young voters. What do the Tories do now, asks Matthew Dancona in The Guardian. He says they know the DUP deal can't hold and the battle for the future of the party has begun. 
Trevor Kavanagh in The Sun says Jeremy Corbyn's mob rule will spark a Labour civil war. In The Telegraph, Juliet Samuel says it's the private sector that's actually suffered most as a result of stagnant wages. I've got no money on me. Ben Jennings' cartoon in The Guardian has Theresa May dodging the collection tins of some of her cabinet ministers. And quiet, please, a blower in the telegraph as Theresa May at Wimbledon, unable to concentrate on her game as her cabinet heckle from the stands. Well, joining me now are Yasmin Alibi Brown, columnist for The Eye and the International Business Times, and Michael Heaver, uh, the former advisor to Nigel Farage. Welcome to you both. Uh, Yasmin Alibi Brown, your fellow columnist uh, in Birrell, in The Eye, saying the Tories have. Uh, basically got to win back young voters. Well, they do, they do. Um, and I'm sure there's still a... I'm sure we've got young Tories somewhere. I mean, a, do you think the way to do it is, is bribing them, doing things like... Well, they um, shouldn't think they're fools. Fees. They shouldn't think they're fools. They need to be much more... You know, they, you, you can't throw these things at young or old voters in the hope that they won't notice that underneath there's an ideology that isn't fit. But what, what Ian's what, manifesto... What, what do you think puts off young uh, they, people? Well, I just think the anti-internationalism, they grew up with an internationalism, it's in their blood, right? Um, the, uh, they see the world differently. Diversity isn't an issue for them anymore. They live with other people with ease. But the manifesto at the end is interesting because that actually, when Cameron had a good six months, is what he was talking about. And of course, Ian was his speechwriter, wasn't he? So he's kind of gone back to Cameron's idea. Well, you understand Mrs May actually spoke to David Cameron and asked him to uh, come to the aid of the party a few days ago. What, what do you reckon on this, uh, young people? Yeah, I mean, Ian Bill makes some fake, fair points. I mean, he talks about key figures have to learn the modern language of politics, you know, showing emotion, not looking like robots. And I think young people, you know, growing up with Twitter, Facebook, all the rest of it, if you look at the Corbyn campaign compared to the May campaign, I mean, not forgetting, of course, she made it about the May campaign as opposed to the Tories. There was no difference. I mean, there was complete. There was no contest. Sorry, there was a completely different approach. You had Corbyn out in massive crowds. You know, excitement, energy, videos that were a bit raw, a bit rough and ready. Dare I say, Farage-esque uh, in their presentation. And you compared that to sort of Theresa May's approach, and it was sort of on her own, one minute in front of a camera, sort of reading from a scripted line. I just don't think that politics works anymore. Now, you see, I mean, Matthew Dancona, who yeah, I think it's fair to say is, is close to uh, the Conservative Party, well, he says, doesn't he? He's yeah. chair of uh, uh, Bright, uh, Bright Blue, Blue uh, the think tank where uh, Damien Green at the weekend said there need to be changes. He comes up with three possible uh, suggestions. One is uh, what he calls or solutions. One is the ideologues, people basically saying we've got it right, more of the same. One is the explainers of uh, actually needing to go out and do a, a better job than Mrs May did, explaining that there are real issues uh, facing the country to do with... Uh, balancing the books and uh, the, the ageing. And the other one is the adapters, which is actually to come up with new policies. And he cites Ruth Davidson as the example there. Uh, which one would you recommend? Oh, look, I think a bit from each. I mean, I know it's very, I know it's very sort of fashionable to have internal or naval gaze on what's going on. And I have no doubt that those reflection of opinions do exist within the Conservative Party, and that's fair enough. But I think there's a fundamental point here. You know, people out there... A lot of people, they're looking at the last week of an election when they're making their mind up. And the mind, you know, the choice they had was Corbyn or May. And I think fundamentally, Theresa May just doesn't come across as a natural leader. I don't think she comes across as someone that sticks to, you know, look at the social care stuff. It was her manifesto, then she said nothing had changed when people, it was painfully obvious things had changed. And I think that they just need as a... Natural leaders are in short supply, though, aren't well, they? Well, you know, I would they're say... Hungry. I've said on this programme before, Adam, I don't, <laughs> come, you know, I don't want to come across as too much of a shield, but I think David Davis is the man that's solid, that's credible, that has a background in what he believes in, campaign for Brexit. And, you know, for Theresa May to have made yeah. the election about her and Brexit when she doesn't even believe yeah. in it was a bit of a mistake, I think. What do you think they need to do? Well, I think, he, you know, uh, this is... Tr I totally agree that Theresa May doesn't have the common touch. She doesn't even have the communications touch. But actually, when you looked at the manifesto, which then was torn up, there were some very good ideas in there. They just don't have it. They did not connect with the population. So that is absolutely true. And I also agree that David Davis has, has the background, has the substance. And, of course, his council boy made good. 
Yeah. So that would work for him. Yeah. And I think that him would, against would Corbyn, him. I think Davis would that actually would very, very well, well. well. Well, I mean, reality check now. Let's talk about Trevor Kavanagh. I mean, the fact mm. is, Conservatives got, uh, as he points out, 800,000 more votes uh, and more than 50 more MPs than Labour. So they came first in the election, even although Jeremy Corbyn made up ground. And, and he's basically, the headline is, Corbyn's mob rule will spark Labour civil war. He's talking about things like the demonstration at the weekend, which seems that some supporters of Jeremy Corbyn don't seem to want to accept the fact that democratically they didn't uh, win enough votes to form a government. Yeah, and, but this isn't just in the, in the Labour Party, it's in the Tory party. The country remi remains severed over Brexit, and you can't change that. The thing that I find difficult with Trevor Kavanagh's language here, you know, they would pay, pay with their political lives, civil war. There is a civil war within Labour. There's a civil war within the Tory party. How that get resolved is the question. Um, and we saw this over the Brexit um, uh, refusal to back um, the amendment. Mm. And one wonders why uh, these rebels launched it at the moment they did. Eventually, I think in five years, there'll be a new party. I mean, that's centrist. what he says. He yeah. thinks there'll be a new, there party, be a new party with party. people like David Miliband and J.K. Yeah. Rowling. And, back and a lot of um, soft stories, if you like, yeah. will move into the, in the Do party. Do you think that's happening? I think it could happen. I think the problem they've got is have they got that big towering figure that can basically launch an insurgent party, front it, give that credible edge? And believe you me, you know, to start a yeah. new party from scratch yeah. and build it is incredibly difficult. But do you think that Jeremy Corbyn's Labour can go any further? Because this is the argument. Does, does he have the appeal to really become Prime Minister or did people actually vote for him because it was a protest? I think that he built an energetic movement that combined, and by the way, Trevor Kavanagh talks about sort of stabbing threats and swastikas. There is a very nasty far left edge tinge to some of this Corbynista stuff. No, I'm not saying that's all of them at all, but there, you know, there's a lot of new people and young people and the rest of it. But there is a nasty yeah. far left element as part of this coalition. But I think, I think Corbyn did so well, number one, because he built that energetic, and it was the contrast as well with May. Sterile, played it safe, and I think if Corbyn went up against May again, I could see him beating him. Okay. Uh, Yasmin, uh, Wimbledon fortnight is beginning. We're going to see a lot of cartoons like this one. Uh, how does Blower uh, tickle it's your really fancy It's really good. Today? It's, it's just brilliant. I mean, it really is absolutely right. Um, but what's interesting is that all these people who are screaming at May, you know, and you know, end austerity, tu tuition fees, I wonder if they realise that actually you can't just do it without an underlying philosophy. There is no underlying philosophy of the Tory party as is today. Is it for business, austerity, or is it moving because it's shaken up by Corbyn and Corbyn's okay. uh, politics? I think this is a, in a way, it made me feel sorry for her for the first time ever, that here she is, right. um, battered by her own party, battered by everybody. And I wonder how long she lasts. OK, well, that is a question. Thank you both very much indeed. We noticed there's a We Love Jezza banner in the crowd there as well. Uh, this is All Out Politics.